Interscalene and supraclavicular blocks of the brachial plexus are often performed for shoulder surgery and procedures of the upper extremity. Because ultrasound imaging blurs the distinction between these two blocks, both will be discussed together in this video. The patient is placed in supine position with the head turned to the opposite side. The head of the bed is slightly elevated to help the patient's shoulder relax and bring the planes of display and imaging into closer alignment with each other. The transducer slides to obtain the optimal image of the brachial plexus. This corresponding video illustrates the transition between supraclavicular imaging and interscalene imaging. In the supraclavicular region, the brachial plexus joins the lateral side of the subclavian artery at the first rib. It is here where the brachial plexus is most compact. When the transducer slides cephalad, the brachial plexus can be followed in short axis view between the anterior and middle scalene muscles. The brachial plexus is formed from the ventral rami of C5 through T1. It provides most of the sensory and motor innervation of the upper extremity. Sometimes the ventral rami can be imaged as they exit their respective cervical foramina. There are several important landmarks when performing brachial plexus blocks above the clavicle. The posterior triangle of the neck is highly vascular and often contains blood vessels adjacent to the brachial plexus. Visible pulsations or Doppler imaging can help identify these vessels. The phrenic nerve is a small monofascicular nerve that crosses over the surface of the anterior scalene muscle. As the transducer slides toward the chest, the phrenic nerve is seen to diverge medially from the brachial plexus. Because the prevertebral fascia covers the brachial plexus and phrenic nerve, local anesthetic injections often distribute to both. The dorsal scapular nerve is the first nerve that can be identified to leave the brachial plexus. This nerve usually passes through the middle scalene muscle and will eventually join the dorsal scapular artery. The dorsal scapular nerve flattens in shape as it enters the middle scalene muscle. The dorsal scapular artery divides the middle and inferior trunks of the brachial plexus. In some subjects, the suprascapular nerve can be identified under the omohyoid muscle as it emerges from the superior trunk of the brachial plexus. This nerve will be seen lateral and superior to the brachial plexus in supraclavicular views of the subclavian artery and first rib. Variation in brachial plexus anatomy is relatively common. In some subjects, the brachial plexus does not entirely lie between the anterior and middle scalene muscles in the neck. In this subject, the C5 ventral ramus passes over the anterior scalene muscle and under the phrenic nerve. This divides the C5 ventral ramus from the remainder of the brachial plexus. There are several approaches to brachial plexus blocks in the cervical region. One common in-plane approach is from medial to lateral. A small footprint linear transducer is often used for the procedure. The small footprint allows easier manipulation of the transducer in a region where the working room is limited by the clavicle. The probe is covered with sterile dressing and sterile gel applied to the outside. For interscalene block, the needle tip is placed adjacent to the brachial plexus so that local anesthetic tracks vertically around the nerves between the scalene muscles. Because the steep angle can reduce needle tip visibility, an echogenic needle is often used.
In the supraclavicular region, a similar approach can be used to block the brachial plexus above the subclavian artery. Excellent needle tip visibility is required because of the proximity of the pleura and major vessels. Local anesthetic can be seen to surround the nerves and lift them toward the skin surface. Sometimes additional local anesthetic is injected above the brachial plexus with the needle bevel oriented away from the transducer to help the needle skim over the plexus rather than contacting the fascicles. After injection, local anesthetic can be seen to track along the components of the brachial plexus by sliding the probe along the course of the nerves. In this subject, the C5 and C6 ventral rami pierce the anterior scalene muscle so as to be divided from the remainder of the brachial plexus. In some subjects, the small supraclavicular nerves can be seen within the subcutaneous tissue that lies superficial to the brachial plexus. Additional local anesthetic can be injected in this location to anesthetize the skin over the shoulder when supraclavicular blocks are performed. Interscalene and supraclavicular blocks are commonly used for outpatients undergoing shoulder surgery. Ultrasound imaging can improve the safety and efficacy of the block procedure.